We live. <laughs> Shay told me I can't rant and I can't go off on people and I'm like burning inside. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are healthy and safe and well and all of that good stuff, enjoying the holidays and whatnot with your family or with yourself and just relaxing and stuff. You know what I'm gonna say, if you're not already subscribed, pause this video and press subscribe down below. Along with that, hit the bell notifications link so you know when a new video is going up. Okay, today we are back here with another influencer Q&A. I posted one about a week or so ago and you guys had so many additional questions. You also love that video, so now I feel like I need to do more of these type of videos where I just answer you all's questions that you have about the industry, about people's workflow and how we do things over here, um, just to get another perspective because all influencers work different ways. Um, we all have different people on our team, different things that are necessary to each and every one of our individual businesses. So it's all different, but just to be able to offer my perspective, um, me being in the game, March will be three years full time. To be honest with you guys, I really don't know how this happened. I really have no idea. Um, so you guys know, if you watched the last video, you know I was corporate first and I was doing influencing and blogging on the side. Um, and then I took the leap into full time blogging, influencing, entrepreneurship, all of that good stuff. Um, but being three years in the game, things change so fast. Um, so for me to just be able to offer my perspective to some of you guys who are still getting up and moving, getting things going, getting into the groove, trying to build your team and things like that, um, I still wanna be able to do that. So, Shay's behind the camera again. Hi people. Lexi's here too this time. Hey. <laughs> and they're just gonna ask me some of those questions that you guys submitted on Instagram. Um, kind of like a follow-up-ish and some of the ones that we didn't get to in the last video. So without further ado, take it away, Shay. Okay, do you need a manager? Do you need a manager? Um, Like I said, guys, everyone's business is very, very different. I feel as though if you're just getting up and started, you don't really have a necessity or a need for a manager. Um, I have had a manager for a little over a year now. Um, and my reasoning for getting a manager was because my business was growing faster than I could keep up with. And I was noticing myself missing a lot of emails, missing a lot of, you know, responding to this brand, this brand, this brand, um, because it was too much for me doing it all on my own. Um, and that's what I needed a manager for to help me manage my inboxes, negotiate deals, double check over the contracts that I sign. Um, because for one person that's just a lot and if you're doing it all on your own and it's a lot of stuff coming in thank god um it's a lot of stuff coming in you will look over things and you will misread briefs and you will have to reshoot content because it's just too much for you to do on your own so i noticed myself missing a lot of deals missing emails misreading things and stuff like that which is why i wanted to hire a manager to help me manage that so then I could focus on the creative part um, and I could focus on creating the content and doing what they hired me to do and more so than the, the front load of the work. Um, and I did notice a huge growth in my business just from me being able to focus on, you know, the fun part of it. Because I felt like I told you guys before, I would be like doing all the emails, doing the negotiating, the contracts and stuff. And by the time it came to shoot the content, I would be like, just take the picture. I don't even care. I would be over it. So the fact that I get to focus on the creative part, growing the business, doing the fun part of it, um, I think that part is worth it. But I do not think if you're if you're good managing it on your own, I feel like you should do that for as long as you can um, until you get to that point. How do you stay motivated and come up with new ideas? Oh, um, she checks emails. <laughs> I know. Sorry. <laughs> Had to make sure it wasn't any money I was missing. <laughs> um, uh, wait, what was the question again? <laughs> How do you stay motivated and come up with new ideas? I have a team around me. So I have people, even if it's not my team, I have other influencer friends or other creative friends who help me stay on my toes, who are not afraid to be like, that's crusty, that's corny, 
you should have did better with this campaign you could have done this this and that um you know i have those people around me who are not afraid to be like okay let's step things up a notch your content's starting to look a little bit repetitive etc um and then i also follow a ton a ton of dope creatives guys i follow so many amazing black women and influencers and bloggers like honestly sometimes i look at their work and i'm like how am i even in this business because they are so freaking dope it's ridiculous um but between that looking at them and seeing how they come up with different ideas and how they place the products in their campaigns and things like that um watching them definitely sparks and fuels that interest of like figuring out something new and creative um to shoot i also have pinterest which i always tell you guys to follow me on pinterest is where i get a lot of my look inspo um because you can literally type in like i'll buy a new jacket and it's a blue jacket and i'll type in blue jacket outfits and you can get a crap ton of outfit ideas and things like that um and then make it your own so that's kind of how I come up with my looks for my shoots and things, or even like if a brand wants to send a specific product, you know, I'll go on Pinterest and be like, you know, type in something similar just to get ideas flowing of different ways that I can, you know, set up or stage my campaign. Um, yeah, I guess I would say Pinterest, people I follow, and having an amazing crew around me who are like, no, we can do this, we can add this, why don't you put this in the shoot, blah, blah, blah. How do you organize all your sponsorships, for example, your deliverables, your due dates, etc.? Um, so my team, we have a Google Drive folder um, and we have folders for each individual campaign. So there's a tracker where it's this month. These are the list of the brands. Um, this is what the deliverables are. This is what the exclusivity is. Um, this is what they're paying. This is when the content is due by. Um, it has it been approved and then we'll have an additional folder where it has the briefs so you guys know when influencers know when you get a campaign um, it'll have this is our goal of the campaign this is what we want you to capture this is what we want you to highlight to you know whatever you know we want you to share about the product um, or the whatever we have going on um, they highlight all of that and then basically give it to you and say make it your own make it fit your content your style and make it so your audience understands it so we have a google drive a tracker a google sheet with everything in it as i shoot the content i check it off um, when we get the briefs in i'll send them out to my team say this is what we have for this next shoot day um, can you guys go over it so then when i'm shooting while we're shooting they could be like uh i read in the brief this has to be showing uh i read the brand wants this to be faced this way um and double checking to make sure everything is captured in the proper way um i will also send it to marika the photographer who um if she has additional ideas so i'll send her this is what they want us to capture and she'll be like okay we can go here we can go here you know we can do it in this part of your house whatever um so that's kind of how i stay organized um one google drive where everybody has access to it to kind of make sure everything flows properly and make sure we get everything done on time how do you get comfortable in front of the camera? Um, I feel like you just have to keep doing it. When I first started my YouTube channel, literally, if you guys go back and look at those videos, you can see me like shaking, sweaty armpits, like everything. And I'd be lying to say that like, I still like don't get uneasy. Um, if you guys ask my parents or like any of my family back at home, like this is probably the last thing that they would have imagined me doing because I was like the shy, timid kid in the corner um, that just didn't talk to anybody, didn't do anything. So like, I feel like you have to just keep putting yourself out there and doing it in order to get more comfortable doing it. Um, and to be honest, when you're talking about something that you love or something that you're passionate about, you would honestly probably shock yourself with like how it just comes about of you because you're so passionate about it. Um, Shay always, makes fun of me because she's like whenever you're talking about influencing stuff it's like you turn into a different person but for me it's like if it's something that i'm passionate about and i care about um you show it uh and yes you'll be awkward at first yes you'll be timid and sweaty and clammy at first but after that like as you keep doing it it kind of just becomes second nature 
um, or it just takes longer for you to get there. So, um, or get antsy, should I say, not not get there, but get nervous because you're just like, this is kind of second nature now. Um, so I feel like you just have to keep doing it. Even when I used to take pictures and post them, I used to be one of those people who like posted a picture and like threw your phone across the room because you don't want to see any of the reactions. You don't want to see any of it. Um, but as you do it, it's kind of just like, it just comes up out of you. Um, so I'm one of those people to just, just keep doing it. Even if you have to just like film stuff for yourself and just keep doing it over and over again, do awkward stuff, even, I don't know. Like I just imagine that it's just me talking to somebody that I know and love, uh, and it makes it a lot easier. So I feel like that may help. Do you think it's too late for someone to become an influencer? No. Not at all. I feel like we are still at the very beginning and I feel like if this is something that you're supposed to do, your gift will make room for you. Um, and that's just on that. Um, yeah, I don't think it's too late. I don't think anybody is too old or too young. It's influencers, kids making a lot more than a lot of us this age. Um, and vice versa, a lot of people ask, or I've seen someone ask, um, if you're too old to become an influencer. And it's like, no, if people are your age and you have a perspective, and if you have something to share, whoever is in that demographic is going to listen to you. Um, or whoever your tribe is or your audience is, they're gonna listen to you no matter the age, gender, any of that. Um, so yeah. How often should you create content or post? Um, I think it's different for everybody. But I do think that Instagram and certain social um, platforms have made it in a way that if you're not an active person, you won't be seen. Um, so I feel like although you want to, you know, take your time and do all this stuff, um, I feel like you need to do that. But also keep in mind that if you're not active on these platforms, they will hide your post. Um, so as much as you want to take all these days off and post once a month, your one little post a month is not going to get seen because you're not an active user. So that's just that. I mean, it's a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people, but it just, it is what it is. On that note, um, will your following be impacted if you take occasional breaks for your mental health? Ooh, that's a hard one. Um, I hate to say it, but yes, it will, because if you're not active, you will come back and it will be crickets on some of the stuff that you post depending on how long you're away and all that kind of stuff but i think that's where you just have to weigh out the fact that your mental health is way more important um and just take that l as it comes like we all need breaks and that's just that but i think a lot of times um people overthink these things like there are times where i've taken breaks or you know whatever but I've also just created content so the world doesn't know. It doesn't look like this big dramatic hiatus from social media. I'm still taking a break, but I've created the content to make it not as much of a scene. Because um, I think a lot of people are like, oh, taking two weeks off, get your last messages in, like won't be talking to you guys. And then it's like day one and they're like back on social media. So it's like, just don't be dramatic about it. Do what you have to do for yourself. Your mental health is the most important thing. Do what you have to do, but if you come back and things aren't the way they were when you left it, you just have to say, but I'm mentally healthy. So let me try to figure out a way to build back up what I, you know, missed while I was away. And that's just that. Do you think it's a good idea to work with local boutiques or just bigger retailer stores? I think that's up to the person. I think that's up to you, what your goals are. Um, are you trying to be more of a local influencer who sh shares and shows the things that are in your specific region? Are you looking to work with bigger brands who have the budget and capacity to support different types of campaigns and initiatives and things like that? Um, I feel like you can do both, but it really, everybody's goals are different. How do you stay consistent when you're not getting the same amount of likes as you were previously? Shay told me I can't rant and I can't go off on people and I'm like burning inside. Who freaking cares? Who freaking cares?
matters. You create the content that you know and that you love and that you believe you're supposed to create. Stop counting likes. Stop counting likes. Those people will come and they will support it. But if you base your content off of the number of likes, you will never get anywhere and you'll be going in circles and you'll be creating content that you don't even want to create because you just want the likes. So I feel like you just keep doing it. Put it, put out what you're supposed to put out. Get off your chest what you're supposed to get off your chest and everything else will just come. Like, of course, evaluate your audience and see what they want to see and, you know, stuff like that. But at the same time, counting the likes is really going to just leave you back here because you will always be disappointed. Like, you will always be disappointed if you count on other people's support to get you where you need to go. That's family, friends, likes, comments, engagement, support, any of it. If you base what you do off of the support of other people and who shows up for you and who doesn't, you will get nowhere. That wasn't a rant, was it? No, you did good. Thanks. How do you? <sighs> um, that was hard. <laughs> <laughs> Do you prefer reaching out to brands first or let them reach out to you? When I started, I reached out to every single brand that I ever wanted to work with in my entire life. A lot of the brands that I work with now that reached out to me, I can scroll up in the messages and see in 2016 and 2017, me reaching out to them saying, hi, my name is Jalisa, I'm a new blogger and influencer. I would love to work with you and it was crickets. Like literally, the worst they can say is no. I pitched myself to any and everybody and just seen, you know, saw what stuck. A lot of them didn't respond. Some of them sent free product in exchange for content, which I did. Um, and a lot of them today are like, oh my gosh, we didn't even see back in 2016, 2017 that you messaged me. And I'm like, you did. I just wasn't big enough. Okay, that's fine. Um, but yeah. Pitch yourself. The worst people can say is no. Go for what you want. I will sit here and message Michelle Obama, <laughs> Oprah, if that's something that I wanted to do, and then just pray that some, like you know, somebody saw it and message back. Like the worst they can do is say no. They'll acknowledge your message. A lot of times when I'm pitching online, I say, you know, hi, my name is Jalisa. Um, I'm a local or a DFW influencer, whatever, whatever. Is there someone who I can get in touch with as far as your influencer partnerships go? Um, do you mind sharing their email? And sometimes they'll give you the email, sometimes they won't respond. A lot of times they'll give you the person and then you just take the pitch from there to email. Here's my media kit. This is what I've done for other brands. Here's where you can get to know me. Um, here's some, you know, content that's done really well related to you guys, whatever. Um, but you just take that time to like show them what you can provide. I don't go saying, this is what I charge, y'all wanna post? Like, no, you have to show them what you can do for them, especially if you're pitching to them. Like, they didn't come to you. So you need to prove the case. How do you get started? <laughs> didn't she answer that last time? <laughs> <laughs> I get this question probably 20 times a day. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to find other words because Shay said I can't say just do it. I mean, you can, but what do you mean by just do it? You just start. You guys don't know what's going to work and what's not until you just start. There's only but so many ebooks and courses and YouTube videos you can watch. You have to put it together and just do it. Like like I told you, an inf and if it's, if it's related to influencing and blogging, an influencer and a blogger, like I said before, is you, you're that before you become that. So you just continue to post about the products and things that you know and love. You get a website, you start writing about the products that you know and love and the things that you love and what you wanna talk about. Um, you start sharing your experience uh, via whatever platform you want to. So if video's not your thing, write a blog post. If blog posts aren't your thing, talk on Twitter. Like there's so many different ways. Put a photo and long captions. I don't know. You just do it and you throw stuff to the wall and you see what sticks. You see what your audience wants. Um, you can't, I think a lot of people, a lot of times people try to like think through to the end before you get there. And I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I just started making YouTube videos and started posting about stuff. And 
as things started happening, I was like, okay, this worked, this didn't. Let me try to reroute this. This worked, this didn't. Let me try to, you know, rework this. Um, you got feedback from other people. What do you guys want to see? There's nothing wrong with asking your audience, what do you want to see from me? Um, but you just do it. You can't, there's only but so much planning and thinking you guys can do. You have to just start and figure it out along the way. Proud of you. Thanks. <laughs> Um, how do you keep coming up with intriguing captions? Intriguing captions. Um, Tell them what you told me. What? What I called you this week and said? Yeah. So, how do you, much do you want me to share? I don't care. Okay, so Shay is coming into the influencing and blogging world. Shay has been doing it without doing it. So she's kind of now track, like making a business behind it. So one thing, and I'm that friend, I've always been that friend who's like, you want the truth or you want the truth? Uh, so I went through Shay's pictures and I was like, if I didn't know you, I would have no idea what your purpose is or who you are behind, you know, cute pictures. You know, it's a, it's a ton of cute pictures to go around on Instagram. Um, and for me, being a close friend to her, I'm like, there's so much there's so much you can tear, tell and show these people. Um, but she hasn't shown that in her photos or her captions don't, you know, replicate that. I'm like, you're freaking an incredible human, but these people don't see that. Like they don't, they don't know from just the things that you post. Um, so for me, I told her, just start sharing your story, who you are, what you like, what you don't like. Um, even if it is a product, you can share how this specifically relates to me and my life, my family, how I was raised, whatever the case. Um, but just letting people in, I think that vulnerability is what makes you different. It's enough cute photos and cute captions and promo stuff going around. But that vulnerability is what makes you you. And that is what is the difference. So my advice to her was, why don't you just share a little bit more about yourself? Let people in a tiny bit more and you know, of course, not everybody just goes and just dumps onto the world, but you doing a little bit more each day, at least lets your audience know and buy into who you are. Um, and that was, that was my advice to Shay. Also, if you're not following Shay, go to her, <laughs> go to her page and follow her and any questions you have about her, leave them in the comments so that she can answer questions and tell people more about herself. Thanks. <laughs> And they will do it. I you know. Hi, new friends. <laughs> I think a lot of people freak out about, and this is just a bunch of questions that we've gotten, about not having enough. Like, I don't have so many items, or I don't have money to buy a whole new, like, try on. What you have is what you need. CC Lexi. <laughs> she said that before we started the video. Um, yeah, like I told you guys before, I was getting clothes from Boohoo and Pretty Little Thing and all these places. Um, for one, I was getting outfits and reworking them. So you guys would see like this is 20,000 different ways to wear this same midi dress. Um, stuff like that. But I think what you do with what you have is what makes a difference. So you don't, I was shooting with a phone. You know, I didn't have vlog cameras and all this kind of stuff. Even now, some of the clips that you guys see on the vlogs are from our phones. Um, you don't need all of the production. You just create with what you have and as things grow, you see what you can add to that. Um, even as far as a team, I know someone asked something about being a one person show. We've all started out that way. You know what I mean? And some people I know are, you know, influencers like me and still are one per one band, one, one band, one sound. That. <laughs> uh huh. It's only one of them. They shoot the content, they do the emails, they do the negotiation, they do the creative, they have the tripod, they have the remote, self-timer on the phone, whatever, and their content is still amazing. So I think it's really what you do with what you have. And this is also another perspective of your content that you can share. Like, I'm doing all this on my own. This is what my workday was like because I'm doing this on my own. I just wanted to be able to share so you didn't know or if you haven't seen anybody who does it on their own, this is something that you can also use 
with your story and your journey, like me showing people how they can do it all on their own. Um, so I feel like everything you can use to your advantage. Um, and yeah, cause I feel like a lot of people want to know, like, I don't have this, I don't have that. I don't have this super big production. So they're looking for people like you who do it all on their own to share your content and share your journey and how you're making what you have work. That's, That's all it. we have. That's all we, everybody, first of all, hi, for those of you that are so interested in influencing, please always leave questions down below. And for those of you that reach out and ask us about other stuff, we see yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> we, we see you. Too. And we will respond in other videos. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy these Q and A's of just me sharing um, my perspective. Like I told you guys, every single influencer is different. All of our workflows are different. Um, I actually, in the end of this video, I'm gonna share some other amazing influencers that you guys should follow that also have eBooks. They also have courses to you know learn more about how to do blogging and how to get started and stuff like that. Also just some really good ones to follow. Um, so you guys should definitely check them out. Just all I can really say here is be bold y'all again and do what god has called you to do do what you believe in your heart is your passion and your calling even if it's something that you're like no one's going to want to listen to me talk about that there are people in the world who are waiting for you to talk about that specific thing so don't think that it's not enough or it doesn't make sense none of our businesses make sense to other people i mean it's not meant to make sense to other people we have to do the work put it out there and find the tribe so I just want to encourage you guys for to for encourage you guys of that. Um, I think that's it. I love you guys. Make sure you're following me on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff. Please make sure you guys support your brown influencers, your black influencers, guys. We put so much work into this content and stuff. Um, and like I told you guys before, the pay gap is here and it needs to stop, but we need you all support on our sponsored content. Um, as much as you hate to see it, this is how we feed our families. Um, and then this is how we show them our worth. So make sure you guys are supporting your fellow black and brown influencers. We love all of you guys and I hope you guys have a great holiday. Peace out.